This lesson is for FST Lesson 11.6 on confidence intervals. Confidence intervals do come up in real life. Mostly you'll hear about them whenever researchers explain their findings or statisticians indicate what they got for research, usually on the news. You'll hear them talking about um, confidence intervals in, the, in that way. Also, it's used kind of in regular conversation when people say give or take a few. Uh, the give or take a few is kind of the range of, of scores or the range of numbers that they're considering. So here we're going to get a little bit more specific about what a confidence interval actually is. The book does a decent job of explaining. We're just going to condense a little bit what is in the book. There are all kinds of different confidence intervals that you can calculate. The three that we're mostly going to focus on are the 90%, the 95%, and the 99% confidence intervals. And all you do to figure those out is you add or subtract from the mean one of these three outcomes or one of these three calculations. You just take a number times the standard deviation. Keep in mind that if it's for a sample, you'll do the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. The one that we use the most is the 95% confidence interval, and we'll talk more about why in a little bit. So basically you'll just do plus and the average plus and minus a number times the standard deviation, and it tells you a number, a range of numbers that within which you can be a certain percentage confident that the scores will fall within. It's more easy to understand once we try it with some actual numbers, you can see what I'm talking about. Keep in mind that when you're working with samples, as I stated earlier, the, con the calculation here will include the, st the standard deviation divided by the sample size square rooted. So let's go ahead and put it into practice now with an actual question. A candy company produces 60,000 bags of candy each day. From the data on its production, the company has learned that the weights of the bags are normally distributed. That's good for us to know that. That means we can go ahead and deal with our sample size. Mean weight is 7.5 ounces, standard deviation is 0.04 ounces. Companies do care about this type of thing because if they say that the bags weigh a certain amount and you as a consumer pay for that bag and don't get as much as they say, you're going to complain and then they're going to lose money. So it is in their best interest to make sure that their production is putting out what they think they are. And there's usually going to be a range. Not every bag is going to contain exactly the right amount. So they have to set standards for what they're comfortable with in, in terms of a certain range. So between what weights symmetric to the mean do 95% of the bags fall? So right away we're going to do a 95% confidence interval. Now it says the mean of the, of the weights. So we're not doing a sample here, we're just using the original data. So we're going to take the mean, we're going to add and subtract. Remember it was 95%, so the standard deviation calculation we're going to use is 1.96 times the standard deviation. So we're going to do plus and minus 1.96 times standard deviation, which was 0.04. Now a lot of times you'll want to get this number here, just the calculation of the two numbers multiplied together. You'll probably want to do that first anyway, just because of the order of operations. So we're going to do 7.5 plus and minus the number 0 0.0784 it looks like. And so when you add and subtract that number from the mean, you get two numbers. You get 7.42 and 7.58. Now you'll round to more decimal places as needed. I think usually two decimal places is perfectly fine. And so you write your answer as an inequality and you put the mean in between the middle. And sorry, these should be, um, should be x in this case. So our data is going to fall within 7.42 and 7.58 ounces. Now that we're going to do for part B, we're going to do the same calculation, but this time for a 25 bag sample size. Now we don't need to worry about the fact that the 25 is too small, because remember they told us that they were normally distributed. So we can proceed even though that sample size is a little small from what we would normally use. Again, we're going to do a 95% confidence interval, this time with a standard deviation of 25, excuse me, a sample size of 25. So we're going to do the same calculation, 
But now when we do plus minus the 1.96, it's not going to be times 0.04, it's going to be times 0.04 divided by the square root of 25. So the confidence interval changes because now it's a sample size. So when you calculate the multiplication here along with the division, you get 0 0.01568. So we're going to be plus and minus the mean to that number. And so when we do that, we get 7.48 now and 7.52. Now notice that the range or the span of numbers in between the two that we got are more narrow than what we got on the previous question. Remember that we're doing a sample here and so we're dividing the standard deviation by a number. We're making the standard deviation smaller so it will be less spread out. So the sample size confidence interval should be smaller than the original population. And so now let's talk about what you would just say for this answer. You're 95% confident that the bags will fall within 7.42 and 7.58 for the original population. And you're 95% confident for the samples that they took that the average weights will be between 7.48 and 7.52. Let's go ahead and try another example. This is example two in your book. A superintendent, which is basically like the principal of a whole district, not just of a single school, of a large school district is worried that juniors will not do well on the required state test in reading. Past years of students provided widely varying means for the district, but the standard deviation has always been close to 9.2. The superintendent uses a released form of the exam, a past form of the exam, to test 72 randomly selected students in different area high schools two months before the real test. The students score on average 1 point, excuse me, 135. Estimate the mean score mu of all juniors in the district. Now there's a problem with this question. It doesn't tell us at what confidence interval we're studying. So I found in the book a really important quote that we need to look at. When you know the standard deviation of the population, the size of the sample, and the mean of one sample, you can compute an interval in which the population mean has a 95% chance of falling. So pretty much 95% is the rule of thumb that you're going to use, assuming that they give you enough information to calculate it. So we're going to go ahead and do a 95% confidence interval here. So remember that it is for a sample. So we're going to take the original mean, or excuse me, the sample mean. We're going to sub add and subtract from that the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And when we do that number divided by, oh I'm sorry I forgot our 1.96 didn't I? Since it's a 95% confidence interval it's 1.96 times the standard deviation divided by the size of the sample square rooted. Forgive me for that error. So now when you calculate here that answer is 2.12509 and so then you'll add and subtract 135 from that. So our confidence interval is 132.875 to 137.125. So we are 95% confident that the sample score of the juniors will score on average between those two values. The book goes on further to give more information about confidence intervals and I would recommend that students read here. So I'm going to quickly or slowly scroll through some of the additional material that I want students to look at here in the video. They do talk about more in detail the parts of a confidence interval and I do want to talk about that briefly. When you set up a confidence interval, the span of numbers that you get is itself referred to as the confidence interval. The level that you're setting, whether it's 95% or 90% or 99% or 87% for that matter, the actual percent that you're shooting for, that's the confidence level. So what level are you shooting for? That's going to be a percentage. And then the two numbers that you arrive at when you add or subtract from the mean, that's going to be your confidence interval. The piece that you're going to be adding or subtracting from the mean is referred to individually as the margin of error. So let's go back to our examples here so I can talk about that vocab just one more time. So our 
confidence level on the previous two questions was 95%. The margin of error on this question was the 2.12, and the confidence level was the answer that we got. So go ahead and take a moment to read the items on the screen here, and the video will scroll through those very slowly for you.